All right, thank you, please. Next case is case 16651, Peter and Donna Hildebrand, 31, Violet Road, Kings Park location, north side of Violet Road, east of Highland Road, Kings Park, property zone R10. Request variance to increase the maximum permitted height of a fence and or wall from 6 feet to 12. Decrease the minimum required setback of an 8-foot high retaining wall with 4 feet high fence on it from lot lines from 12 feet to 0. And your name, please? Peter Hildebrand. And your address, Peter? 31 Violet Road, Kings Park. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You want to tell us why you're here? I'm here to request a variance to increase the maximum permitted height of a fence and wall uh, from 6 foot to 12 foot and to decrease the minimum requirement setback of an 8 foot high retaining wall with a 4 foot high fence uh, to from 12 foot to 0 foot. Okay. The, uh, the existing wall, I'm sure you have the pictures of it, it's pretty well deteriorated. Uh, and I'm in, my intent is to tear down the, uh, the deteriorated uh, railroad tie wall and replace it with a, a block wall with necessary fill, drainage, backfill, landscaping. Anything else you want to say? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Planning? A, a question. Um, the board is supposed to grant the minimum relief necessary. Um, what would you think if you made the wall one or two courses lower um, and just tip the dirt or the soil down a little bit? Um, you may end up also saving. 20% of your cost on the wall. Well, the town has an easement there with the uh, drainage pipe from uh, Violet Road that goes, right. goes through my property. And there's one, uh, like a basin, about six foot from the wall. <coughs> so if I kick the wall back, I would No, just, what I, was, I meant was, is like instead of it being, uh, let's say, um, 12 courses a block high. Um, what if you made it 10 courses high and just tipped the dirt down in the last three feet or four feet a little bit? Um, I'm only saying because the two, twofold. One is the board's supposed to grant the minimum relief necessary. And the second thing is, is the cost of this wall must be pretty enormous. And uh, it might be beneficial for you to save whatever, a few thousand dollars. I just uh, was wondering what your reaction would be. Uh, well, I'd prefer to have the wall uh, that height than, you know, where would I have to, I'd have to do, do another retaining wall back further then. It's no. Sort of like to terrorist the property. No, I was just saying um, if you, if it were, let's just say, 16 inches lower. Um, obviously, if you didn't taper the dirt down to meet it, it w the dirt would fall over the top of it. And I was just saying that yeah. go out about three feet from the wall and taper the dirt down to meet the wall. Uh, what do you think, Roy? This is oh, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, this, this is the uh, hypothetical. The engineer who would have to do the plans. I got to swear him in, in, though. Let me this, swear you in. This. Oh, sure. Come to the mic. Yeah. Okay. Let me have your name and address. My name is Roy Erlinson. I'm from Northport, New York. Okay. And I've been working on, with All Pete right. on this. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Do you understand what Mr. Flynn is saying? Yes, I do. Uh, it'd be great. I don't, I don't think any, anybody wants the, uh, an eight-foot wall, but this, this is, was and is an eight-foot wall right now. 
So that's why we went for this particular permit to, to build in kind the exact wall height that is there now. Could it be dropped a block or two? It's possible. Uh, without uh, uncovering the manhole that is existing there, there's a town manhole six feet from the property. That's one thing. And the second thing is uh, this, right now, with the eight-foot wall, the property would be practically level. And right now, the, the downward, I say the northern properties that abut this have a water problem with the wall as it is. There's water running down as well as railroad ties running down on their property because of this deterioration. Yeah, it's, it's, I'd say it's possible. Mm -hmm. It's possible to knock off a block or so. We had, we said eight foot, it actually comes out, the wall height from the, from the grade below is about seven, seven and a half feet. You could knock off maybe a block if that's if I'm that's not trying really to pressure anyone. It, the, just the thought came to me that you might be able to save some money. And, no, it's a good idea. And, uh, it's a good idea. Get but closer to compliance, that's all. Uh, but uh, It's possible. Mm -hmm. it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't line up with, if you look at some of the, uh, uh, the existing lower height walls to the immediate left and right of the property, right now it's, it's a straight line basically mm -hmm. on, the, on the wall. So the wall had to be stepped in some way anyway. Okay. So it's a good <laughs> suggestion and uh, I try to knock off a block or two would be great sure. without <coughs> putting a real slope onto the other people's property for water retention. Thank you. <coughs> Spell your last name, please. E R L A N D S O N. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? <coughs> okay. Hearing none, I'll entertain uh, motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Greatly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> okay. Next case is case 1 16566. Re advertise Francis and Deborah Gretz, 12 Salt Hay Way, Smithtown, location. Terminus of Salt Hay Way, east of Landing Meadow Road, <clears throat> property zone R43. Request variance to increase the maximum LWRP growth floor area of lot from 5,880 square feet to 9,175 square feet. Increase the maximum permitted paid surface in the front yard from 25% to 30%. Reduce the minimum frontage at setback line from 150 feet to 70 for a proposed 8,060 square foot two-story dwelling, including a 987-square-foot attached garage. Reduce the minimum side yard from 24 feet to 15 for an existing 750-square-foot cabana. Variants to permit a second one-family dwelling in District R43, temporary variants during the construction of a new home. Variance to allow the lot area, frontage, or yard, one building to be used as a part of the required lot area. Frontage or, or yard or any other building. Permit a principal structure to be located behind any other principal structure. Permit a principal structure not to have its own frontage on a public street. Permit a rear dwelling without a separate frontage and other lot dimensions. Good evening, <coughs> Madam Chairman, members of the board. My name is Vincent Tremarco. I represent the applicant. I've submitted the affidavits of posting and mailing uh, to Tom. Uh, I'm sure you're all looking at the survey. Um, it's a rather unique piece of property. Um, and the, the survey that you have, of course, well, you have both, but the one with the uh, uh, proposed dwelling, you can see it's more centralized uh, on the property uh, than 
uh, the existing house. Uh, half the language of the ad of the advertisement uh, was our request to allow us to stay in the existing dwelling uh, while uh, we are constructing uh, the new home. Um, again, it's, it's a rather unique piece of property, and if you uh, look at the survey, you'll see that it fronts on the Nessequag River. However, uh, the property is probably 40 to 50 feet. Well, there's, I can't see the, uh, the elevations, but maybe 50 feet above uh, the Nessequag River. So um, even with the old house, which is closer uh, to the river, uh, but especially the new house, um, there'll be no line of sight from the river. Um, so the, uh, the people in the canoes are not going to see the Gress's residence. They don't see the existing one now, and the new one is, is uh, further to the front of the property. Uh, we already have um, DEC approval, and you know how tough they are with respect to uh, their philosophy um, that the guy in the canoe uh, shouldn't be able to see civilization uh, when he looks around. And in this particular case, all he's going to see is a vegetated, very steep slope. Um, I have the architect here and the builder and uh, Mrs. Gress. Um, and um, actually, Mr. and Mrs. Gress look long and hard um, to find uh, either a house or another piece of property that would come close to this piece. But they couldn't. And they want to stay in Smithtown and, and build their uh, dream house. Now, it's rather large. It's a little less than the advertised 8,000 uh, square feet. Uh, we know um, it doesn't comply with the LWRP. But given the size of this property and where it's located, uh, you wouldn't build a three or 4,000 square foot house. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. Um, they're also asking for the continued use of, uh, it's a cabana type um, building because when they're done with the house, they're, they're going to build, they're going to build a swimming pool um, that um, uh, obviously uh, needs a cabana. So that house or that, that building will, will stay uh, with certain renovations. Uh, you can see down by the water there's a, uh, a boathouse, well, halfway down, uh, and that was built probably 50 or 60 years ago. The old house is a rather unique house, but it doesn't serve uh, the purposes uh, of Mr. and Mrs. Gress. It's old. It's really starting to uh, deteriorate. So they come to the board and ask for what appears to be substantial variances, but they're really not, given the property uh, that we're talking about. Um, as you can see, it's off Salt Hay Way, and it's got a, um, a rather a small road frontage, but um, if you're on Salt Hay Way, uh, you probably won't see the new house either. So it's rather um, uniquely camouflaged, and it makes for a certainly um, good application uh, in the town of Smithtown. Uh, I warned uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gress that the taxes aren't going to be cheap. They're probably going to be between thirty-five and forty thousand dollars a year. Um, but they indicated they want to stay here um, and continue to live in the town. Uh, if the board has any questions, I have. Uh, the architect, Chuck Hewn, and the builder, uh, Mr. Joe Hansen. Um, and, of course, Mrs. Bress is here, too. Lanny? A couple of questions. Yeah. Um, with respect to the uh, using the existing house, um, it looks like the accessory building in the side yard uh, seems to be used as a dwelling. Is, is it? Used to be. It you was... When my clients bought the, uh, uh, this uh, existing house, um, it, was, it existed as a, it looked like a cottage 
It had uh, bathroom facilities, a bedroom, and so forth. But uh, since that time, uh, it's been inspected probably three or four times by Alan Richards of the building department. And um, uh, we have conformed um, uh, to the requirements of the town. Um, it will not be used for any type of dwelling. Um, obviously, we want to want to maintain it and use it as a cabana. As a cabana, okay. Um, I don't have the uh, personal information on this, but I've been told by people in the planning department that the house is actually not 8,060 square feet. It's closer to 9,000 square feet. Do you have any information? I have the architect here, and I spoke to him about it before, so I think okay. he could better address it than, than I could. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, right. Chuck Kuhn. All right, let me have your name, please. Yeah, Charles Kuhn, P.O. Box 641, Northport, New York. So your last name? K-U-E-H-N. Okay, and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the plans uh, that I submitted, uh, the square footage that I uh, submitted to the town were, were basically a computer generated uh, square foot tally uh, from an AutoCAD program. Um, I mean, I can, I can tell you what the square footage is. The first floor is 3,492. Second floor is 2,118. The garage is 987 square feet. And we have uh, three porches that add up to 1,135. The, the porches don't get included. Right, um, I know that. So the, the attic space that's more than I think five foot nine does, is that included in the calculation? Uh, that is included in the calculations we submitted, yes. Okay. And like I said, this is a computer generated uh, square foot tally. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Like I said, I don't have personal knowledge, but okay. I think three people in the planning department have all done calculations and came up, I think, because of the attic, uh, something approaching. I, nine, I did submit cross feet. section to the building showing the five foot nine uh, ceiling height right. uh, with a complete attic plan with square footage. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Gentlemen? No questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I haven't seen anyone here yet, so. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing that, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Really moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Case 16524 has been adjourned to April 24th. Case 16531 has been adjourned to April 24th. All right. I can see that the next case is of high interest to the community. Um, <clears throat> the applicant will, and the, or the attorney, will present the case. Then I will allow everyone one opportunity to be heard. Please we make your remarks that are going to be factual related to the variances. As this board, our decisions are based on the five criteria that are here before us. It is important that this hearing is fair and orderly. So I'm asking that there'll be no calling out, no talking from the audience, and no applause or outburst. Um, everyone needs to cooperate so the court reporter can hear and record all the statements, all right, please? And I will ask the applicant then to come back to the podium and to answer your concerns. I thank you for your cooperation and your orderly and professional manner. All right, Mr. Schmuckel, I will read the case now. <clears throat> case 16590, Mobile Storage Group, 1158 Jericho Turnpike, Comac. Location, south side of Jericho Turnpike, 
east of Mayfair Terrace, Comac, property zone WSI. Request certificate of existing use to maintain a 5,000 square foot retail store. Increase outdoor storage max height from 6 feet to 19 feet. Permit outdoor storage to be stacked. Increase the max outdoor storage area from two times to 10 times the growth floor area. Reduce the minimum landscape area from 8% to zero of the site. Mr. Tramarco. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the yeah. board. Yes. Okay. You want to recuse yourself? Okay. I'm sorry, you didn't hear me? <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's let me get everything set here. I think uh, we'll start with the hard <coughs> excuse me, the hardware store, uh, which uh, started out as a, uh, a building and a shop um, um, in um, 1954 or 55. It later became a hardware store and it's been actively a hardware store for at least the past 40 years. Um, I know <clears throat> I've been using that hardware store uh, uh, since I started practicing law in my first building uh, down the block from uh, Comac Hardware. So I think that it's very uh, easy for this board uh, to grant the non-conforming status of the hardware store because it's been in continuous use for such a long, long period of time. And um, I'm sure most of the people in the audience um, have used the, the Comac Hardware store. So we asked the board for its uh, favorable consideration and uh, finally uh, <clears throat> uh, making a decision that <coughs> indicates that that's a non-conforming uh, use. All right, going to the mobile mini storage, um, about, I'm going to guess about three or four years ago, we came in and had an application before this board. Uh, it was a little bit different. Um, uh, because of the fact of, of n number one, one of the, uh, uh, the elements that's different uh, now than then uh, was the fact that uh, the buffers, their required 50-foot buffers uh, in your application and in the site plan, we show it as 75 feet uh, on the westerly side, on the um, um, southerly side, um, on the um, on the easterly side, <coughs> basically, um, there's commercial property. Uh, that's uh, Alcamo swimming pools and, and Alcamo uh, granite um, shop. Um, during the course of this application, uh, Philip Arcolisi, the uh, owner of Alcamo pools and, and Alcamo uh, granite and marble, um, uh, paid me a visit um, and asked um, uh, Mobile Mini Storage uh, if they would be uh, so kind as to cooperate with him. If you look at where um, Alcamo Pool's two-story uh, brick building is, it's set back approximately 137 feet. Obviously, uh, the setback, I believe, in, in our... Um, I'm sorry, in WSI is 50 feet, but because I, I guess at the time he wanted all the display pools in front of his building, um, they, um, they uh, um, placed the building back. And then we did some variance work for them um, uh, based upon uh, when they were doing the granite uh, shop. So anyway, um, Mobile Mini Storage has agreed um, that for the first 137 feet, 
uh, from the street, uh, they will not um, have vehicles or any equipment uh, higher than 10 feet. So if you kind of draw a, uh, a line across from uh, Alcamo Pools uh, to the east, um, you'll see that the, uh, our agreement or the agreement of Mobile Mini is that they won't have any equipment higher than 10 feet. And that allows, I guess, um, some concerns of uh, Mr. Roccolisi with respect to a line of sight for his building. Um, now, the other thing I want to emphasize with respect to this application is, uh, <clears throat> although we're asking for a, a large um, capacity storage variance, let's consider what this building, what this business does and how they operate. They operate from uh, Monday uh, through Saturday. Uh, they operate from 7.30 in the morning to 5 at, light, at night, never on Sunday. Um, the average moving of equipment or the storage containers uh, on any given day is between 15 and 20 moves. That's it. It's not a situation where you have constant movement back and forth. It's not the nature of the business. The nature of the business is uh, to rent a storage container. Uh, the storage container is put on a truck. The truck delivers the storage container. When the storage container is uh, done being used by the customer, it's brought back to the, um, the, uh, the site. There is basically nothing else that goes on there. Um, it's really a benign use uh, when you consider all of the uses that are permitted in a WSI zone. Um, we could put a Burger King, we could put a, uh, any type of fast food place, uh, Taco Bells are open all night long. Um, this is certainly not any of that type of continuous use. They would also be permitted uh, to um, allow, or the town, uh, pursuant to their zoning ordinance, permits body shops, permits repair garages, and numerous other uses that are far more intense than this use. They have, my client's predecessor, well, two predecessors, started off with Gibney storage probably 15 or 20 years ago. Um, and now it's Mobile Mini who took it over uh, just a few years ago. Uh, I have um, Ryan Citarella here. Uh, he's the manager. Uh, he indicates to me that um, as long as he's been there, he hasn't had uh, any complaints or heard any complaints. And uh, according to uh, uh, Ryan, there have been uh, no, no neighbors have come down and said, hey, look, you're making too much noise, or, or could you control whatever um, problem they, they have? Um, the reason why Ryan is here tonight is uh, if there are any issues that we don't know about, we'd be happy to take those uh, into consideration. So we don't feel it will change the character of the area. Uh, on one side is... Um, Alcamo Pools and Marble Shop, um, they do, um, uh, they don't build pools there, but they certainly uh, do granite and, uh, and marble uh, finishing, and, and they make kitchens and uh, kitchen countertops and vanities and the, and the like. Um, uh, we know on the other side, uh, being the west side of the property, there is how, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> houses, uh, and that's why uh, we suggested of our own accord a 75-foot buffer. So again, if you look at the site plan, you'll see 75 on the west side and 75 on the south side. And we obviously intend to maintain the buffer and um, try and be 
uh, a, a good neighbor. Um, we don't think that this would have a, um, uh, an adverse effect on the environment. There is no um, any, there is no storage of any kind other than the containers themselves. They don't store anything in those containers. Um, uh, there's no volatile fuels. Uh, there's really no uh, chance of any type of contamination uh, to the uh, land with respect to, to this use. Um, whether the variance <coughs> is substantial, well, I guess with respect to the storage it is, but I ask you to take into consideration how many times you've granted variances uh, with respect to automobile dealerships who, again, <coughs> are permitted in WSI, and you've given them uh, multiple uh, times the uh, permitted use for storage of cars, new car inventories. I mean, I could tell you five or six that we've done in the last uh, two or three years. So. Um, that's one situation where this board has saw fit to grant um, uh, multiple times the permitted storage. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, a little bit down the road uh, to the east, there was uh, Bel Air um, Auto Body who purchased a piece of property across the street and this board was kind enough to grant a variance to store uh, automobiles. And that property was about an acre and a half. You didn't require anything more than the buffer of, of 50 <coughs> feet, which is again a requirement. That's zone WSI. And the rest of the property is flat, not in the situation that we have here, uh, at least to the south where the neighbors are up high. Um, and the property um, is probably 30 or 40 feet uh, below uh, the south southerly uh, borderline. Um, whether the uh, alleged difficulty was self-created, uh, I, I know that Gibney went in there and without the benefit of permits many years ago. Um, and, um, but it's been there a long time and I think um, it's a rather a good use for the area. As I said, you could put in a lot more intensive uses uh, without even having to come to this board. So that's one thing that hopefully the board will consider and the neighbors who are here tonight uh, will consider. Um, I guess mobile mini storage could go anywhere. Um, it's not something that uh, they're mandated uh, to be on a, on a busy Jericho Turnpike. The traffic <clears throat> that would be generated by a, a Burger King or a McDonald's or some other fast food place would be hundreds of times more than the 15 or 20 trucks that go in and out a day. So um, that's something I, I hope that the board will consider and, and the neighbors will consider too. Um, Will it have an ad ad adverse effect on the environment? I think I went through that already. Um, can we um, do this in any other way that's feasible uh, without asking for this variance? No, we can't because if we can't store uh, uh, containers, then we're out of business. We have to go somewhere else. If this board denies the application, um, they will have to go um, and find another location the landlord of the property will then have to look for another business use, which it's got to be more intensive than what's there now. So I ask the board for its favorable consideration. I'll leave the uh, site plan up here so neighbors can look at it. Board has any questions? Planning? Um, just for the record, uh, the board, I believe, either approved or intended to approve a few years ago the certificate of existing use for the retail business. Um, and I think that the record that Mr. Tremarco made at the time uh, should be used to support this. Uh, ordinarily, for a certificate of existing use, the board has been rather demanding with respect to proof. 
uh, that the use lawfully predated the zoning and that it hasn't been abandoned for more than 12 months. However, I think that um, in this situation, since the use is, I guess we'd call open and notorious on Jericho Turnpike, it's passed by 30 to 40,000 vehicles a day. Um, it's pretty obvious to almost any, it's like common knowledge that this has been a retail business mm -hmm. for probably as long as anyone can remember. Mm -hmm. um, also, I think from a planning standpoint, the, um, <clears throat> the use is what WSI is intended for. I think the problems that we heard from the neighbors a few years ago um, wasn't from the use per se, but ha was how it was operated. My recollection was is that there was banging in the middle of the night, two in the morning, I seem to remember someone saying. Mm -hmm. Also, the trailers were close to the residential <coughs> properties, and apparently uh, uh, the new owner or new somebody uh, intends to uh, allow for a larger buffer in the back. So presumably, if it, the property can be um, kept in a neat state of repair and the use far from the neighbors, um, and without the noises, then it would achieve what the zoning intends. Okay. I have a question. You're going from 6 feet to 19 feet. How many uh, <coughs> trailers would be stacked at 19 feet? I, I think two. Two. And uh, remember, it's not within 137 feet of the property line in the front. I know that. Okay. Mr. Camargo, these are empty containers that yes. someone rents for their own use, and then when they're done, they're cleaned and brought back empty, or they brought back... Oh, they're back brought back empty. They're not uh, a storage facility where people can store... Okay. Um, so they're just empty containers. Oh, yeah. They're all empty containers. <coughs> Any other questions? No okay. No let me then open it up to the neighbors. And if you would line up, I would appreciate it so that you can, you can speak if you'd like to. <clears throat> um, same thing. I'm going to have to ask everyone to give me your name and spell your name, please, and your address, all right? And then I'll swear you in. Okay. William Campisi, 4 Tulip Lane, Comac, New York. All right. Spell Campisi. 4 Tulip Lane, Comac, New York. Spell your last name. C-A-M-P-I-S-I. -S right. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. I have photographs over here that were taken two weeks prior to the last meeting before it was adjourned. They're not stamped and they're not signed. They're open for view or otherwise I'll just hold on to them. I don't know. Well, if you want to just um, I'll leave label them, them, leave them with us. And if you want to label them, we can put it into the record. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. This facility is absolutely undesirable to our neighborhood. The diminished quality of life, the gross violation of our right of quiet enjoyment has been imposed tremendously just by the mere fact that these trailers are banged with ear-piercing grinding metal containers in collision with other containers starting at 5 o'clock in the morning and each morning, and that includes Saturday, all right? Uh, especially, you hear, you know, the winter time is, you don't hear it as much because your windows are closed. Often in the summertime, your windows are closed because your air condition is on. You're not able to enjoy a nice, cool breeze with your windows open during a, a nice temperate climate. Otherwise, you're being woken up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, our homes, our cars, our furnitures at one time were covered with overspray from the containers being sprayed uh, by Gidney, which was the former owner, I understand. But that spray, uh, he was pa actually painting the containers. It got all over our houses, got all over our cars, right? All over our kids' furniture, our outdoor furniture. But he came up, he apologized, he, he buffed out our cars. Big deal. But guess what? Look at the environmental impact that it caused us, right? Not to mention that nobody even investigated uh, the environmental impact that happened to the groundwater over there. And there was grinding, there was constant painting going on over there. I don't know if they're painting now, but at the time they certainly were. Uh, 
my 57-year-old home that I live on in for over 20 years right now has experienced stress cracks in the walls. I've repaired those walls several times just because of the heavy load that's been exerted to the ground from the heavy bang of, the, of these containers. It, it actually vibrates. It's almost earthquake quality. Uh, our yard is overran with rats. Rats are running through the neighborhood. They're scurrying from yard to yard. My neighbors with small children. I have children, but right now they're grown. But uh, it's a tremendous concern. The town has been out there to investigate. They've looked at all our yards and said, these yards are absolutely clean. There is no reason over here to draw the rats. But rats, unfortunately, uh, have a close distance to where their habitat is. So the, the closest habitat is the disturbed ground over by the, the uh, pit itself. Teens are using that facility because of the disrepair of the gate. I live on Tulip Lane. At the end of my block, there has been a gate that's been down uh, that recently my neighbor and I just put it up because uh, an another neighbor of uh, ours, uh, family member passed away, and we didn't want our block look to look totally uh, disgraceful, so we put the gate back up ourselves after my neighbor told the ownership that this gate is down. It's overran with poison ivy. It's spilling over our, onto our streets. Our kids be, uh, got infected with poison ivy several times because uh, of what's spilling over as far as their vegetation. Uh, like I said, the children, the teenagers, uh, we've spotted them several times walking in, so we have to act like the police. What are you doing here? Get out of here. You know, it's a dead end block, and they find it an ideal opportunity to walk down that open gate and hang out, drink. We've cleaned up their yard, picking up empty bottles as to not create more of a nest and habitat for the rats and throwing it out ourselves. In one of those photos, there's even a shopping cart in there that's been there so long that trees have grown through it. Uh, the containers aren't stacked one high. They've been stacked too high, all the way back to our property line. All right, so it's a clear and definitive view from our vantage point to see their entire property. It's, 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 uh... Oh, my neighbor also wanted to make sure the poison ivy, okay. But uh, that's about it for me. And okay. I'm sure that my other neighbors uh, have a lot to say. Okay. Let me have your name, please. Eric Curie. I live at 8 Mayfair Terrace, Comac. Okay. Say your last name. Q-U-E-R-E. Okay. Uh, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Uh, I've been a resident at 8 Mayfair Terrace for the past uh, 12 years. Uh, we moved in, seeing that the yard was there with the containers. Uh, over the years, it's consistently gotten worse activity out there. The banging of the trail is 4 o'clock in the morning as early sometimes, waking you up. Our bedroom is elevated, and we have a back door that we like to keep open for the air breeze, like many neighbors do, in the nice, nice weather. But with these containers, we've been forced to abandon our deck that we use on the upper floor there and to keep the door closed just so that we're not getting woken up in the middle of the night. Uh, the idea of Mr. Tremarco comparing that we might get other neighbors in there as some sort of implied threat, we're going to get a worse neighbor if they move out, they, they're absolutely the worst. I'd rather have a Burger King there. The cars pull in, they circle, they leave. We don't hear a car start the ignition. Every time one of these trailers is being moved in that yard, it's a loud, piercing bang, scraping of metal. It's, uh, it's just, imagine an airplane crashing in your backyard every time they want to go uh, move one of these containers. As far as uh, many of the other points, as far as the uh, unkemptness of the property, uh, you have so much overgrowth there it's not planted and maintained. It's just overgrowth, abandoned. The workers throw the garbage up in the, uh, in the easement, sometimes over the fences into our backyards. Uh, we've had problems with rabid raccoons, the rats. Uh, it's just another, another bad example of a bad neighbor here. I mean, Mr. DeMarco seemed more concerned about keeping good ties with his uh, adjoining commercial neighbor, which is all nice, but they've showed total disrespect to, this, to the uh, residents of the neighborhood. Uh, the idea that they're asking for more now is crazy. They want to go from, uh, what is it? Uh, two times, ten times the gross floor. 
just double, double stack the trailers, and everything is double stacked there. There's not too many single level trailers. That, that would increase, according to his estimates, of 15, 20 trailers entering and exiting that lot a day by five times. That puts up to 100 movements a day. 100 movements a day is calculated maybe two every hour, two, two three every hour, four every hour during working hours. That's just constant all day of hearing these grinding, banging trailers. On top of that, being that we're, the location's right on Jericho Turnpike, we all pull out on Mayfair Terrace because that's a major access point into the area that we live. Uh, they've just recently had a Hess station there in the corner. We have uh, Northgate Shopping Center there, as well as the hardware store, bank, and uh, the uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. This, this intersection, which is only maybe 100 feet from the entrance of uh, the mobile storage yard, is just turned into a nightmare of an accident-prone location. And that's without the added volume of uh, traffic that's going to be going in and out of the yard as proposed. Uh, it's seriously got to be taken consideration. It's, my family's driving out there. Uh, everybody's family that lives in Smithtown, but in particular, we have no choice. We have to go out at that intersection, as well as people who live on the north side of the road who haven't been made aware of this hearing and given notice to come here. They have to come down Kings Park Road and make that turn onto Jericho, whether they're going east or west, where this additional traffic, once again, is going to be. I mean, just constantly with the accidents there, I don't know if there's been a traffic survey conducted. Is anybody please advise? Has I don't believe there has been. I, I mean, it's, it, I mean, I believe we had a fatality there over the summer, right at the intersection. Uh, numerous accidents. Once a week, we're seeing accidents coming out of Northgate Shopping Center, which is directly opposite the entrance of uh, this location where they're proposing all this additional traffic. Uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Campisi hit on most of the pretty good points with poison ivy. Just uh, general uh, lack of uh, respect to the neighborhood. And they're asking us now to move forward with trust when all we have is to rely on the past bad acts of these folks. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass it on okay. to my next neighbor. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. My name is Tom Schulteis, uh, 27 Arista Court. All right, spell your last name. S-C-H-U-L-T-H-E-I-S-S. -S. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, I think the other two, our other two neighbors, uh, spoke very well on, uh, on the issues that we have. Um, I'll just go over it again, that uh, whether this is an undesirable change. I think that uh, changing the height by a factor of three, which is what he's talking about, he, uh, he uh, the, the lawyer um, mentioned... Uh, that there was only uh, one trailer, but at present there's two, so I suspect that what he's trying to do is, by going from 6 to 18, he wants to stack three, okay? Three on top of each, you know, three in a row. Uh, at three in a row, uh, they will be above the level of our, of our um, backyards, and we will see the trailers all the time, okay? Uh, so uh, whether this requested... Uh, Variance is substantial. It is grossly substantial, okay? It's the factor of three in, in height. Um, right. Benefits sought by the applicant, well, as far as the town's concerned and as far as we're concerned, if, if a different business comes in, I'm sure it will be better, and I agree with the other neighbors on, on that. Um, and I do think that if they stack three trailers, uh, that the value of the ho homes will all go down, okay, and our, and our uh, property values will go down, okay, which to the town means a decrease in taxes because we will all get our taxes uh, changed. Um, well, whether this alleged difficulty is self-created, you know, these are movable trailers, so, I mean, he can, he can just do his business as, as he used to do it with, with uh, one trailer and... Um, We've lived there for, for many years with, with that being the case. So. Okay, thank you. Now, if you're all going to say the same thing, or you can just, you know, if you have something new, I would appreciate it. If you're going to say the same thing, you could just say that I agree with what okay. has been said. Um, unless you have something new to give us as far as information. Yes, I Let do. Let me have your name, please. My name is Frank Dietlich. Spell your last name. D-E-T-E-L-I-C-H. And your address. 5 Tula Plain, Comac. Raise your right hand. 
Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the yes, truth? Yes, I do. Go ahead. I probably the oldest resident of the Mayfair area. I've been in there 56 years. So I remember when it was a brickyard and there was a restaurant down there. Years and years ago, it was always maintained. I worked for the Smithtown Highway and I work in the Kings Park Yard. Down Indian Head Road and there's Plycon. It's a big moving company. And if you look in front of Plycon, the fence is beautiful, the landscaping is beautiful. It's very well maintained. You cut through my dead end street into the sand pit and you can go like cut through the Comac hardware, whatever you want to do. It used to be always sloped nice. The slope now is, is horrible condition. There's rotted garbage, there's steel sticking out from the dirt. There's, like Bill Campisi said, shopping carts with trees growing through them, old motorcycles, raw garbage, beer cans, beer, beer bottles all over the place. And it's a disgrace. It actually took my neighbor's fence and the weeds just grew over the fence and pulled the whole fence back and he had to purchase a new fence. And my neighbor to the other side of me is an older woman, she can't afford a new fence. Her fence is half into the, into the sand pit now with the weeds overgrowing and pulling it back. I've called the owner, the old owner, several times and told him I'd like to, to repair the fence. And I, he gave me a hard time and I said, look, you could have a, a lawyer call on you because some kid went down there and broke both his legs because the pitch is not right, the slope is not right. And it's got to be cleaned up. And I believe three years ago when I was here, you guys said you investigated the property and searched the perimeter and said that it was in deplorable condition and something had to be done with it. Well, it's worse now. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Charlie Andrews. I live at 6 Mayfair Terrace. Okay. Andrews, that's Bell Andrews, I guess. Yeah. Spell it. Yeah, A-N-D-R-E-W-S. All right. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Um, I agree with what everyone said. The only thing that, like everyone else in the area, I, you know, bought the house and fixed up the backyard so, you know, you can enjoy your house. In the summertime, we can't enjoy the backyard. We put a pool in during the day. If it's, you know, in the afternoon, you can't go back there because of the noise between the containers slamming and right. when they lift them up with a forklift and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, they're in violation as of right now. That's why they're going for this variance. And, you know, if we were in violation and we were putting an extension on, you'd be knocking on the door, put a stop work order. So, you know, living there, paying the taxes that we pay, you should put a stop work order, make them come out of violation, and then they can go for their variance. Because why, you know, my taxes are quite a bit of money over there. And, you know, I don't feel it's right living where I live. And, you know, he's saying Alcamo Pools is set back and suck. They look nothing like the front of Alcamo Pools. Alcamo Pools is, you know, looks nice on the road. This place looks like garbage in the front, the back, the side. So okay. that's my Thank you. Uh, my name is Jeff Bertuccio. It's B-E-R-T-U-C-C-I-O. I live at 17 Mayfair Terrace, Comac, New York. Right. Raise uh, your right hand. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Um, I, agree with, I agree with all my neighbors. I think I'm probably the furthest neighbor out of the bunch here. I'm on the west side of Mayfair Terrace on the corner of Vasta Court. Um, same thing, noise, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, some mornings in the, in the summer, uh, clanging. It just, it is a terrible thing, and um, I don't think anybody has a problem with the hardware store. It's really just a container company, and they should really clean up that area. That's Thank all you. I have to say. Hi, my name is Jennifer Tyne. It's T-I-N-E. Okay. Uh, your address? 26 Astor Court. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. My f house faces north, and I basically, looking out my front window, I see the back of um, all the containers. Um, and I completely agree with all my neighbors. Um, the only other thing that I could add to it is that I am a mother of very young children, and it has woken up my kids. We have to just close all the windows, you know, run sound machines, and so on. So I just would like to say that I agree with that. And I just want to add, from a mom's point of view, it's really terrible that you can't even open the windows. So okay, thank, thank you. you. 
Hi, Edward Lieberman, L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N, 25 Astor Court. Okay, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. All right. Again, uh, after going uh, behind everybody, I agree 100% with everything, uh, what everybody has to say. Just a couple of points to add, um, that I reside directly behind these trucks. Right. Uh, the residences are on a higher ground than the storage company, and uh, I feel if they allowed them to change the distance, uh, it would change the support of our backyards. Uh, there's swing sets, pools, electrical poles, trees, and uh, a court, you know, any change may cause a, a severe shift in the ground. Uh, our property value has absolutely significantly uh, decreased every time they've moved further back. Um, at the distance uh, that they are now, it is unhealthy. Uh, there's a significant amount of debris that constantly goes into our backyards where our children are playing and breathing in this dust. You can actually see a film on the top of the pool uh, when the debris starts to settle. Our bedrooms face the backyard and we're unable to open the windows in the spring and summer because of the debris, uh, the debris, uh, debris and dust that gets into our house. Uh, also, like uh, some of the others uh, said, uh, the windows actually rattle uh, and things shake in the house when they drop a storage unit uh, on each other. Uh, as far as the height, increasing it from six to nine feet, um, I don't know exactly how tall each of these storage units are, um, but I think they're a lot uh, taller than what they say. Um, I plead this panel to see for themselves, uh, if you have not so done, done so already, that the mobile storage group already has two storage units on top of each other and has for some time. Uh, in regards to reducing the landscape from eight to zero, the trees that separate the storage group from our homes, as little as they may be, are the only visual appeals in this neighborhood we have left to separate us from these storage units. The fact that they even want to remove those is not just environmentally unsound, it truly shows us how little this company cares about the people that they surround. I urge this committee to keep whatever quality, both visually and environmentally, we, we, people have in the surrounding area have. I urge you to maintain the quality of our backyards and the area where our children play by denying these variances and helping maintain the neighborhoods which we reside. Thank you. <coughs> Next, please. My name is Brendan Lally, L-A-L-L-Y. -L -L I live at 16 Mayfair Terrace, Comac. Right. I've been living there for the past 32 years. Wait. Raise your right hand. Oh. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Like I said, I've been living here for the last 32 years. And I do enjoy my summer nights with the windows open, so I 100% agree with my neighbors about the noise. But I'm sure most of them work day tours. I, I do 4 to 12s for the last several years. And I get home around 1 o'clock in the morning. I start falling asleep around 2. I heard some people say they heard it around 4, 3 o'clock in the morning. I've heard it as early as 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm sure they're well into their sleep by that time. And I'm just stirring to go to sleep. So it starts as early as 2 o'clock in the morning. My backyard is three yards down from their back property line. I'm just west of them. And I feel, <clears throat> excuse me, that the noise and the quality of life that we're suffering is... Uh, going to affect our property values. If somebody wants to buy our house, they're going to hear all of this. And we're all taxpayers, too. So okay. I can't add any more because they all had yeah. the same thing that right. I say. But like I said, I've heard it as early as 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And if you let them stack those things three high, it's going to be a bigger bang that we're hearing now because I'm sure they have a spotter on the ground for the two that they already have stacked there for years. So if they're going to go higher, who's going to be up that high to tell them how to put it there? So I think it's going to be a lot more noise than uh, we're having okay. now. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Yes. Name is Lewis Windham, W-I-N-D-H-A-M, 12 Mayfair Terrace, Comac. Thank you. All right. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Um, I'm agreeing with my neighbors. They're all, they're all saying the same. And uh, a little mistake between the lawyers and one. Excuse me. I, address I, this board, please. Oh, okay. I called, I called a couple of times on complaints about the noise. And uh, nothing's been done. So uh, something, something between the lawyer and them, there's something wrong there. Uh, even Kentucky Fried Chicken, I called the town many times at 3 o'clock in the morning to clean their dumpsters out. No, nothing said, nothing's been done. So how can you call up and complain about something and nothing gets done? 
And like my resident, my neighbors say, I'm right behind it. This dumpster's right in front, right in my yard. I'm near 30, 33 years, and I'm retired. I get up 4:30. I used to get up 4:30 every morning to go to work. Now I'm retired. I can't even get up. I get up. They wake me up. It's right. ridiculous. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Next, please. Hi, my name is Kara Millman. M I L L M A N. 23 Astor Court, Cormac. Right. Raise I, your right hand, please. Oh, sorry. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Um, I like to say I agree with I agree with my neighbors, and I the only thing I wanted to add is a question because I read the letter that we got, and it says that they're um, reducing the minimum landscape from eight percent to zero percent. But then I heard Mr. Trimarco say that they're putting seventy-five feet worth of plantings, and that doesn't sound to me like it matches up. I know he's going to come up and answer questions, so yes, but, that is um, my question. He's putting a buffer up. Well, and, it doesn't say that in the letter. It sounds like they're going to put zero up. No, it is. It's, uh, well, he has to do what the, his, what the plans show. And if you see the plan there, this is going to be 75 feet of buffer here and 75 feet of buffer on the south side. Do you see it? I, I see it on the paper, but mm -hmm. um, I thought this was promised years ago, and I don't think it has come to fruition. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, quickly, please. Yeah. May I have your name, please? My name is uh, Andrew Sinkew. I reside at 29 Astor Court. Mm -hmm. uh, my property, my back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Spell your last name. C I N Q U E. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I just want to address some of the issues that Mr. Trey Marco had uh, mentioned in reference to noises and stuff like that. There are complaints which I filed with the town with Jeff Horton that's on file. So if you, the board members want to review, it's not just hearsay, they're filed with public safety. That's one issue I just want to address. As far as the, the neighbor, he mentioned Alcoma, and uh, they've been bad neighbors as well. And we, we, we had problems with them, with them removing woods. And Brian has come down from engineering has, and has seen in my personal backyard from them reducing setbacks, which made them put a retaining wall. We had to bring in 85 yards of topsoil to my backyard just recently because the backyard caved in because of what Alcoma has done to my backyard, which they're trying to do now with this container company. So it's, it's ridiculous. And one other thing, it doesn't just affect us as neighbors. It affects all you people here. This is what people come to see when you're coming over Sakato Sunken Meadow. My friends say to me, oh, you live behind Port of Newark, the containers. It's, it affects all of us. You people live in this in town of Smithtown. You see it. Everybody's affected by this, not just us. It's an eyesore. It belongs by the, by the dumps where the town dumps are. That's where this belongs. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Okay. Mr. Tramarco. And the gentleman who gave me the pictures, let me just, where are you? Okay. What you need to do, if you want me to keep them in the record, you need to put your name on it, the date that you took them. All right, well, give me a, the idea of the date, all right? And the address. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Mr. Tomorrow. Just a couple of comments. Um, uh, the 75-foot buffer is 75 feet away from our property line. Um, and the last gentleman who spoke uh, indicated the uh, problem with, I guess, caving in um, his backyard. Well, we're going to be 75 feet away from our own property line, and obviously we can't touch that property. Um, so that buffer uh, against the both residential areas, um, we're not going to encroach upon that buffer. Um, and any containers will be stacked starting 75 feet away from our, our westerly and uh, southerly uh, property line. Um, the containers, um, the request was to 19 feet. They can't stack more than two containers if the board decides to grant the variance uh, to 19 feet. I've also uh, spoken to my client, and he's indicated they don't even have the capacity to stack three high. You need a forklift that's uh, uh, larger or higher than the one ones they use. Um, 
the um, so just so everybody understands, they're not stacking more than uh, two high uh, anywhere on the property, and not more than one high, uh, 30 uh, or equipment trucks and so forth, 137 feet uh, from the front uh, property line. I think I heard somebody say that they were concerned about us removing trees. We have no intention of removing any trees. Um, in fact, we wouldn't be allowed to do that. Um, there is no painting uh, that goes on. Uh, I mean, maybe there was painting years ago, and I don't uh, question what that um, gentleman said, but there's no painting going on um, with respect to uh, mobile mini storage. Um, they start at 7.30, and they end at 5 o'clock. And if that doesn't happen, then obviously the neighbors should make a complaint not only to, to my client, but to town officials. Because we have no problem, if the board decides to grant this variance, to put time, uh, times of operation and days of operation. Um, with respect to rats, um, I don't know where they're coming from, but I don't think uh, uh, rats would be in a situation where there's nothing to eat. Now, maybe they're coming from some other areas. Uh, it's a, I, I sympathize with the neighbors. I just don't think it's coming from my uh, client's property. There are restaurants in the area. So with that, uh, that's my presentation. Again, I have uh, my client's general manager here if you need to ask him any questions. Okay. Have any questions? Okay. Yeah, I have yes. a question. Go ahead. Is it the applicant's contention that the uh, Hours of operation have not been prior to 7.30 in the morning, such as the, um, the neighbors have been saying? Yes. They, if there was a noise, and I'm not saying they didn't hear noises, uh, uh, perhaps it emanated from the site, but that wouldn't be from the employees of um, my client's property. They don't move uh, um, uh, containers around at that time in the morning. I'm not saying that maybe it didn't come from there. Maybe because that fence was open, somebody came in, and I don't know. Uh, if the fence isn't fixed, I'm sure my client will fix it. And the buffer, that's, uh, that's not intended to stop sound from the clanging of the containers, right? There's nothing in the buffer that would stop sound, correct? Other than space. That's it. Thank you. OK. All right. Thank you. All right. I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. It's regularly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you so much. Thank you. You want to put this into the record, please? Next case is case 16612, uh, uh, Whitestone Auto Body Center, location, south of Middle Country Road, Wisconsin, property zone WSI, requests a special exception to permit a repair garage, variance to permit, to permit a special exception without sufficient plot area, frontage, adequate parking and adequate buffer yards. Increase the max gross floor area from 25% to 27%. Reduce the minimum landscaping area from 8 feet, 8%, I'm sorry, 8% to 3%. Reduce the minimum parking from 46 to 39 spaces. Reduce the minimum parking setback from 6 feet to zero. Reduce the road 
frontage from 100 feet to zero. My name is Vincent Tremarco. I represent the applicant. I've, I'm going to submit the affidavit of posting and compliance. young one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say who, I just said the good looking guy. <laughs> I'd just like to give you a little bit of history. I know it's late, but this building was built, I guess in the early, early uh, or middle 70s. And um, it was built by a guy by the name of Carmine Roboto. And when it was originally built, there wasn't a CO. I don't know that there was a permit taken out. Uh, and it existed uh, for um, that way for, for many years. And then um, See if you can find the, uh, the uh, thing from uh, the planning department. Do you have the PAR? Yeah, I have it. I just was looking for it. But yeah, you have. Take, take, yeah. It has all the history and everything on it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Mr. Roboto, it, uh, it was purchased uh, by um, Lucy Forte, who was still an owner, and her then husband, Mr. Forte, and they specifically bought it <coughs> for the purpose of running a body shop. Therein lies the name, Whitestone Auto Body. So from the very beginning, it was used as an auto body shop, uh, albeit um, without all proper town approvals. Uh, Mr. Morrissey may want to touch on that. that that'll be his. Mr. Morrissey uh, is uh, Lucy Forte's son, who uh, Lucy is, is still around, but um, um, Mr. Morrissey is going to uh, speak for her. In any event, one of the other things that happened is this property uh, fronts on a private road. This private road um, actually was made private um, probably 15 or 20 years ago uh, with the consent of the town, with the consent of the highway department. Um, and with the consent of the adjoining owners, one of which was uh, Whitestone Auto Body, uh, Lucy Forte in particular. There's a landscaper along that road. On the other side is uh, Acura uh, car dealership. Um, one of the problems that was had years ago when we, when we applied uh, was that the uh, town uh, took a position that it wasn't on a public road, so their hands were tied and they couldn't um, uh, even uh, look at this or, or grant uh, any kind of variance. Well, truth be told, there is a portion of the road, if you look at the uh, tax map uh, down at the bottom uh, where uh, Whitestone Auto Body's parcel is, that uh, still, for some reason, is a a public street, but I don't really think that it matters. Uh, what matters is there are businesses along this road, one of which is uh, Whitestone Auto Body. I've read the, um, 
the PAR from uh, the planning department, and um, uh, we're thankful that they recommend approval with conditions. Um, however, there's a couple of things that really shouldn't be, and we disagree with their recommendation. Uh, the conditions, all of the recommendations approved with conditions is, are fine, except for uh, the first one is the floor area of a repair garage shall not exceed, of the repair garage shall not exceed 33% of the gross floor area. I guess that means of, of the building. So that would limit us um, to 33% of the building for a repair garage. Worse yet is number two, which says no auto body repair uh, shall be permitted, um, I guess, in this building. I don't know the rationale behind that, um, but if the board would just give it some thought for a minute, um, it's surrounded by automobile uses. Uh, to the east is Acura, and uh, to the west is some woods, but right after that is, um, I believe it's Lexus. Uh, they both have body shops uh, to repair their own customers' vehicles. Ever since Fortes owned the property, or Whitestone owned the property, whether it was them in the auto body business or their tenants, it was always either a repair garage in part and an auto body in part. Without, with the board, if the board decided to uh, ban the use of uh, uh, auto body repair, we're out of business. That's a perfect place for auto body. It doesn't affect anybody. It's surrounded by basically commercial uses. Um, part of uh, even the Dodge um, Chrysler place comes around <coughs> and uh, uh, touches uh, my client's property on, on the south. There's a 50-foot um, strip of land that's zoned WSI. The first time we came here many years ago, we had, um, we were right on the line, uh, but that wasn't a problem. We were right, right on the line with residential, uh, next to a residential piece. Well, we're not anymore. That's been zoned WSI. Uh, I think w I, I did that about I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago. Um, so the main two things that, that give us uh, substantial concern is the limitation of repair and the recommended prohibition of auto body. The other, the other thing that, that comes to mind is if we come in with a new auto body tenant, which right now I don't think we have any auto body we tenants. Have we have a couple of appl applicants. However, they would still have to come before the board and um, get a, um, uh, a uh, special exception or comply with, the, uh, with the, uh, uh, all of the requirements of an auto body. So the board would have control. I know they're talking about, uh, planning is talking about um, they don't have any place for uh, the containment of crashed vehicles. Well, I don't think as long as I've known um, uh, Mrs. Forte and I've visited the property many times, that place is never full. Uh, parking in the rear is virtually non-existent uh, as far as being used. So if um, an auto body um, establishment were to rent there and they would have to come to the board and they would have to show how are they going to contain the crashed vehicles. Um, there is something mentioned in the report about, well, maybe they could keep them indoors. Well, that wouldn't make a heck of a lot of sense. Uh, you need the vital floor space to, to do your repairs. So uh, it's been traditionally used as an auto body and a repair garage, mostly auto bodies. Um, the last tenant moved out. He was an auto body guy um, who used most of the premises um, uh, for, um, um, I guess he did fixing of new cars, but it was an auto body business. 
we did bring in an architect, Bill Pandolfi. Uh, he went over uh, all of the um, issues with respect to building permits. He actually uh, uh, met with the town a couple of times. Um, I th and we had a meeting with, uh, I believe it was Mr. White who came out um, with um, um, uh, Phil Pandolfi and myself and they actually walked from one unit to another to see what the problems were. We understand that the building um, has been um, kept without the benefit of approvals and without the benefit of COs, but now uh, it's, it's finally come to pass that uh, Mr. Morrissey, along with his mother's uh, uh, approval, uh, wants to come in, wants to make the place better, but if you tell us that we can't use it for automobile, we might as well close the doors because nobody's going to come down there and, and use it uh, for a warehouse use. Ninety-nine percent of the people that come uh, looking to rent is for automobile use, and it's a perfect place because they're not disturbing anybody. Uh, you don't have uh, residential neighbors behind them. Um, it's really an appropriate place uh, to allow this, and each one of the people who would come in would at least have to come in for a change of use, and I think those things, uh, the town would still have control. Um, the, um, there, you're asking for additional landscaped areas in accordance with what uh, a plan attached by, uh, I guess, the planning department. Um, there really isn't much areas where you could put any landscape. And remember, it's not like you're on Jericho Turnpike or any town road. It's on a private road. Nobody really cares. The only people um, uh, that would care about landscaping are people that um, would back up to this uh, place, and those people uh, happen to be uh, Lexus on the rear and on the other side is Acura. So um, the necessity for landscaping, we think, really doesn't uh, make any sense in this uh, particular situation. Um, finally, <coughs> we, we understand, and again, we had our architect there about... Uh, the issues of paving and drainage and so forth. Um, we've been dealing with, um, as I said, Phil Pandalpi. He's gone to the engineering department. He's spoken to the building department. And those things um, are, um, are being dealt with. Um, if there are any signs that require variances, obviously we would have to come in at that time and, and ask this board uh, for variances. Um, I think that um, uh, planning wants this to happen, and um, they've come up with uh, conditions, but some of those conditions just won't work. We'll go out of business if uh, you prohibit the use of uh, auto body and limit the use of repair garages to 33%. Let the marketplace uh, tell us um, what's to be rented and used. Uh, with the conformance uh, to town codes. I think uh, Mr. Morrissey would like to say a few words. Okay. Uh, I'll swear you in. Can come up. Oh. Give me your first and last names. James Morrissey. Spell your last name. M-O-R-R-I-S-S-E-Y. -S -S and your address? 40 Peacock Lane, Comac, New York. Okay. Uh, I live in Florida, actually. 1750 <laughs> Northeast 39th Street, Oakland Park, Florida. But my house, my mother owns, I use that address, sorry. Okay. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do, ma'am. Go ahead. Well, I'm here for a lot of reasons, but mostly this all started when 1977, when I was still in high school. And until now, which I'm over 50 years old, most of my adult life, this has been an ongoing concern. And I've been doing nothing but manage this building. Because I could not get the proper COs and because of the obstacles in our way, 
the, the town wanted the private road. They wanted us to abandon the road. The land next to us was rezoned several times, and we couldn't get the proper special exemption for auto repair. I've been trying to make this legal. I've had to deal with nothing but problems with tenants that come and go, and we got fly-by-nights. I think the quality of people you want in Smithtown are good tenants, good body shops, good people for the long term that create jobs. To limit us in, in a, an auto body field to only 30% of the building, it's just not a going concern. I'm a CPA, and if you can't get people in this building that are going to pay the proper rent, I can't keep it going. I made the sure this time that we're not going to get stuck again. We just recently had to evict a tenant, a major tenant that had 80% of the building, because he said he could not get on the tow list or cannot get a spray booth permit. And of course, he just wanted to cheat us out of the rent. But the problem is we have to make this legal for this to be a going concern. We want to get quality tenants in the town of Smithtown. To do this, I have to be able to rent this out at a proper rate and pay the $25,000 worth of property taxes that we owe the town every year. If you're limiting my, my income, I just can't make it work. I've tried with the real estate to get other people. I said, my, I said to the realtor, can you get a baker? Can you get somebody else that could you do landscaping? Or some, nobody wants to pay the rent in the town of Smithtown because we're in a higher tax bracket. They'd rather go somewhere else where the taxes are lower. I, you got to help me make this rentable, make it a going business. It, I've been working with the town. I, I, Mr. Bongino knows that I've been down to the, plan, uh, the building department many times. I want to get this done. It's been open building permit for 30 years. My family relied upon the advice of an attorney who was the town attorney to, when they purchased this property. This was not self-made. We went into this thinking that this was going to be a body shop legally. And this is 30 years, 34 years later, I'm here. Mr. Forte's passed away, and now my mom is stuck with a business that's it's empty. She's got to evict people from the premises. She's 72 years old. What are we supposed to do? We need this. There's nobody here to complain about, at least not that I know of. <laughs> We're in, this is my neighborhood. The, the car, every car dealership is right here. Why can't I have a body shop? Why can't I have an auto repair shop? We, we've been patient. We, we abandoned the road when the, the town wanted us to. The property next to us was rezoned residential for whatever reason, and we couldn't get our permits. This is years later, and Vinny's helped. He did a good job. He's trying to make it right. Can we, can we just make it right? And thank you very much for hearing me. Okay, thank you. Uh, just so I can form uh, the record. Um, we don't feel that this will be a change in the character of the area because we said it's really automobile uses uh, that surrounds uh, this particular piece of property. Uh, whether we could, uh, whether the, we could achieve uh, uh, the benefits that, and the variances that we asked for by some other method. No, we can't. This is what's happened by virtue of the marketplace and, and, and what people uh, want to come in and rent. I mean, we'd be happy uh, to rent to uh, a guy that uh, stores uh, toys and yo-yos and stuff and just comes in and out, but they're not going to come over there. Uh, uh, whether um, the uh, requested variances are substantial, they're not. I mean, if you look at them, and even the uh, planning department uh, recommended approval. Uh, whether the proposed variance will have any effect on the environment. Yes, uh, we know that you have to be extra careful when you have uh, repair garages and body shops. And that's why you have all these rules about spray boots, um, about uh, disposal of oil and other distillates. Um, uh, but um, any lease that Mr. Morrissey uh, uh, prepares uh, requires uh, not only uh, that they conform to the law and environmental laws, but also requires them to have insurance uh, against environmental spills and so forth. Uh, whether it was self-created, well, I guess they made a mistake 40 years ago uh, when they bought this building. Uh, 
Uh, but um, we hope now that we can finally rectify it and um, do the right job. So we ask for your favorable consideration. Planning? Um, I think it's uh, probably appropriate to explain the recommendation. Um, it's not arbitrary and it's not to make life difficult for Mr. Morrissey. Uh, it, it's simply uh, if two body shops went in there, they wouldn't come back to you. This, this is the approval. Um, and there's no provision to store the cars. I mean, if there was a place on the plan where the cars would be stored, there'd be a different recommendation. Um, I didn't know whether they were going to store them off-site. You know, some garages, uh, like Gayo's Garage in Kings Park, uses some yard on Old North Port Road to store uh, towed vehicles and stuff like that. So I didn't know what they would do based on the information uh, submitted with the application. Uh, a recommendation, our recommendation might be to uh, amend the plan and just say, like, they need to use this part of the backyard for storage or side yard or, or front yard or wherever it happens to be. Uh, that would make the parking variance more severe, but um, perhaps based on Mr. Morrissey's testimony, um, or I th actually I think it was Mr. Tremarco's statements, that the... Uh, Maybe they don't need nearly as much parking as the uh, town requires. But do you understand what I'm saying? Is that there's no provision for uh, storing the towed cars. That's all. I'd just like to make one comment, and I, I agree with David that there is no specific provision. Uh, we think that we're going to rent mostly to repair garages and, and, and body shops, but I think we got to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. So if we come in uh, uh, and go to the town and say, okay, we're going to do a, we want an auto body shop and he's renting 1,000 square, 2,000 square feet, and this is where we're providing the, um, um, the uh, area fenced in for crashed vehicles, uh, that's fine. The next, now we don't have any other tenants, so there really isn't a, a, a parking problem. So the next tenant that comes in may be a repair garage and we don't need that area for crashed vehicles. The third tenant may be a yo-yo factory, I don't know. So I think you've got to look at it from a case-by-case -case basis um, and, and work on it that way, rather than us propose it now when we really don't know. Mr. Morrissey says he's got two auto body places. Well, one car dealer and... I, you need to go to the mic. Oh. We have one auto body place that would like to rent 4,000 square feet, and one, I think it's a car reseller, but he works on his own cars. I don't think you need an auto repair exception for working on your own cars, but it fits the, you know, the building uh, for another 2,000 square feet. And I could sign these leases tomorrow, but I decided to wait for the board's recommendations and approvals. Thank Take, you. Taking from what Mr. Tremarco said, rather than limit the, uh, to say no um, body shops and to limit the repair garage proportion of the floor area, Maybe the board, a recommendation of the board might be, is say no outdoor storage without prior approval by this board. So if a tenant comes in and wants to use a quarter of the backyard or half or 10% or whatever, then the board would approve the location and amount of outdoor storage. Well, I was thinking more about um, that's great, but you know the board's got a busy schedule and three months down the road. Uh, what about um, uh, if we go to the planning department and we show them where uh, the storage is going to be and so forth? And you know, if we disagree, then we'll come to the board. But we may not disagree. I'd love to, but there's no space for outdoor storage. It's all parking and aisles. There's no there's no square inch. Uh, that's an exaggeration, but there's no more than like five square feet of extra Maybe, space. Maybe, uh, you know, it's my fault. I, I, I sometimes have a problem being clear. 
if I come in with a repair garage, I'm sorry, an auto body shop, and I need 35, I believe it's 3,500 square feet of fenced in area, right. and I show that, that means that I haven't eliminated, I've, I've taken X amount of parking spaces, so I have to account for that when I come in with the next application. Maybe that's a, a, you know, a warehouse to store toys, and, and the parking requirement is much less. Do you follow me? I, I, mean, I otherwise do. We'll I don't think the numbers will work as optimistically. It could probably work a little bit um, if you have enough warehouse. I'd just like to say that a lot of the parking is not used. I mean, most of these businesses only have a few employees, and they don't need 40 spots. They need more storage outside. I mean, they don't have a lot of customer bases that come and go like a retail or even a mm -hmm. big wholesale operation. And, and also the neighbor down the street, he just parks cars on, along the street. I mean, right. there's, there's plenty of parking along the Doyle Street. I mean, I, I understand to, the logic, but I'm working with the ordinance. I, I mean, if, if, do the we ordinance really requires need, a certain Do we really amount. need 40 parking spots? I mean, ten at most would be used by tenants. I, I, this is 30 years of experience. I, I understand, and that's what I said. I'm, yeah. I'm not disputing your logic or your, uh, your observations over the years. It's just the ordinance requires a certain number of stalls and a certain... What, what's required for the storage? Well, maybe we could put in a plan. Um, you mean what's required for a warehouse? No, for the storage for the auto repair. Oh, the, the, the outside just, storage. It just says it can't be more than 3,500 square feet. So if you had a compound of 2,000 square feet, then, then that's in compliance, but it would reduce the parking depicted by, say, five spaces or 10 spaces. So would that really hurt our application? It would have to be amended. So we'll amend it. It sounds fine with me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not the board, you know, I shouldn't say that, but from the planning department standpoint, we have no objection. Well, it's just unused property. I mean, what, what's used the highest and best use? That's what we're here for. I. I rather see if we could try and take that back portion of the parking lot and, and right. designate it as um, outside storage and come in with a more substantial parking variance. And then we could take a look at it that way. It might be easier. We'd like to see a more substantial parking variance than storage outside. Okay. That means we'd have to come back. Yeah, um, we gotta, you, you'd have to re-advertise it. Mike, right? You'd have to yeah, I'm trying to work with him because apparently he's anxious to uh, sign up to tenants, and I don't know how to be pregnant and not pregnant at the same time. You know, approve something, and then he still oh, has I to see. come back. You know, approve it so he can have a, the confidence that the tenants won't run out. Um, and yet, why don't we do this? Why don't we see? Let's say we do have we end up with uh, the auto body guy, and he signs a lease. Then I guess we'd have to come in if we can't work it out any other way and, and because maybe the answer is it's not 3,500, it's 2,000 square feet and that might be, I don't know, three parking spaces or something. Right. But you still will have to amend the application. Correct. Yeah. I know, but if we do it now, we don't know what we're doing. That's, that's really the, unless we take a number, I don't know, what was it? Um, was 40 to? 46. To 39. Okay, so we would we could amend the application and come in with uh, from 46 to 28, and then we'd have you know enough storage there. Yeah. Right. You can do it that way. You want to do it that way? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'd, I'd suggest meeting with us just to firm it up a little bit before you actually amend it. Um, we don't want to. In all honesty, we don't want to tell you what to do, but we could give you guidance as to you know, maybe a more efficient way of doing something or a more flexible way. Um, so, you know, I would recommend the flexibility. The, the bigger the storage area, the more flexibility they have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe right. we're talking a little bit more of a parking variance. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. You know what? Let's amend the application. And let's, if we do storage area, and let's say we say, we want 4,000 square feet of storage. It could be 2,000 and 2,000, right? But 
two body shops, I, I guess. I think so. I think, okay. I think that's true. All right. Um, you want to adjourn it for two meetings? I mean, one meeting is... Is that enough time? No, they, they would have to. All right, to. so... August... August. 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 Well, you didn't say August. <laughs> yeah. um, April 24th. Okay. We'll have everything in. All right. And you know what, David? Maybe we should meet yeah, ahead of time. Could, and, you know. Um, meet with either Tom or myself. Uh, okay. The sooner the better. Not right. tonight, but... Yeah, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll be here. Long time. <laughs> All right. So it has been adjourned to August, to August. I keep saying that, to April 24th. April 24th. I must want to go on vacation or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Okay. All right, that concludes our hearings for tonight. Thank you so much.